All right, so let's begin the show. There are plethora of funds available in the market to invest your hard-earned money in. But how do you assess which is the right fund for you based on your financial goals? What are the criteria you should be looking at before you get into buying a fund? Uh, there are numerous questions among investors, and to navigate to this maze today, I have with me Anil Rego, founder and CEO of Right Horizons. Also, if in case you're watching the show live and want us to do your life financial planning, you can send across your queries on our WhatsApp number, which is eight six five seven nine seven four five seven one. You can also email us your question on the Money Show at etnow tv. Hi, Anil. Good evening, and welcome to the show. Let's begin our viewer queries. We have. have mr padmanabhan on phone line with us uh, good evening sir how are you doing today okay your question is specifically on mira asset nifty mid small cap per 400 momentum quality 100 etf nfo right yeah that's right uh but before that can i know your existing financial portfolio with regards to uh, mutual fund investments i am mostly into flexi cap and uh, akash cap fund You have a flexi cap and you have a large cap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Any specific reason why you picked up this NFO or uh, this category NFO? I want to know what is the scope of this and uh, how that. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, what's the time horizon? Right. Sure. What's the time horizon that you are looking at? Uh, five plus years. Five plus years. All right. Uh, let's get your query answered. So, Anil, clearly there is buzz about mid cap and small cap among uh, investors, Anil. And so, you know, it's very obvious for investors to get lured towards this category. And uh, the question that he's asking is also about uh, uh, an index fund, and uh, uh, it's an NFO. And And uh, uh, fund houses are launching uh, such categories, looking at the investor interest and the kind of inflow that we've been seeing. But uh, uh, we, I will ask you about the NFO as well. But then, looking at this keen interest among investors and having small and mid-cap category fund, whether active or uh, passive, uh, 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 how right is the strategy, or uh, uh, how important it is for them to have this category? Are they going overboard just? because we are looking at good returns right now uh, how do you have a balanced view among this uh, craze towards mid cap and small cap yeah definitely i think uh, uh, mid caps and in small caps are buzzing so there's a lot of interest to you know invest into them uh, of course one need to keep in mind that once a particular index has already moved up uh, one needs to be a little bit cautious about how you enter into it right so so from that perspective uh, yes if you are looking at a fund like you know uh, mid mid small cap 400 momentum etf okay then you need to be a little conservative in terms of how you put in your money and and i think the best way to do it is you know uh, put it in phases uh, ideally systematically or at least a phased investment is something that will make sense now one needs to keep in mind that a fund like this is actually a very high risk fund right so because first of all it's investing in both mid and small cap and secondly you know it has a filter of momentum which also takes it a little further of course there's a little bit of quality also that you know uh, comes in you know while you're looking at this index so so that's uh, something that you know one needs to keep in mind that you're playing the highest risk level right so from from that perspective when do you use it I, and and i think uh for mr padman aban because he is already having some of the large cap uh, and the multi cap funds then it makes sense uh, for him to also consider it uh, i would think that uh, don't over expose uh, keep the weightage to below say so anyway between say 5 to 10% of your portfolio okay and uh, use it to take a higher risk at the same time you know if the fund really does well you may at various points of time Uh, look at you know putting some profits out of it, you know. Uh, of course, keep a long-term perspective, but you can always look at de-risking it a little bit so that you know you are also managing the risk and taking advantage of the market cycle. All right, Anil. Now, what is your view on Mira Asset uh, Nifty Mid Cap Small Cap 400 Momentum Quality 100 ETF? Uh, 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 first, let's just explain our viewers as to what kind of NFO ETF NFO is it, and uh, how different it is from uh, the existing same category ETFs that are available. 
One of the things that uh, we keep in mind is actually it's an NFO, which means it's a new fund offer. Uh, so it doesn't have history. Of course, what it is doing is it is mirroring an index, right? Which is the uh, mid small cap 400 moment, you know, the quality 100 index. Okay, so so, so that to that extent, uh, you know, it is a passive one, uh, but it's one of the more intelligent passive ones, I would say. It's not just, uh, you know, nifty 50 uh, stocks, uh, you know, in the same ratio, but uh, there are filters to make it a little more intelligent, which is why if you see uh, some of the uh, some of the funds in the same category have done very well. Uh, keeping in mind, Spit and Small Caps have done well and so also, you know, uh, uh, momentum is playing well at this point of time. So, uh, so you keep in mind that uh, post the NFO, it will also open up. So, which is a good part. And, uh, you know, being an ETF, you can only sell it uh, basically, you know, through your trading account. Okay, so it's not like a regular mutual fund where you put a redemption request and, you know, you get your money. So, you can only uh, trade it through, uh, you know, your trading account. Uh, and and uh, uh, so that also, you know, gives you a flexibility uh, without, say, an exit load. Uh, if you want to look at for a shorter time frame, even though uh, funds like these ideally should be looked at for a longer time frame. So, uh, Mire definitely uh, follows the index or to that extent, if, while you have a passive fund which is following an index, uh, the fund house does, doesn't, you know, matter too much okay, because you are trying to sort of mirror the index, right? So, the fund management calls, etc. are not as relevant. What you need to look at is, you know, is this the right index for you? So basically, do you want to be in mid and small cap? And secondly, do you want to be in momentum within that? Okay, and so do you, you know, you want this part of it for your highest asset allocation? Then definitely, you know, mid, mid small cap, 400 momentum ETF is a uh, option for you to have considered and look at it as well. You, you know, even for any other investor who wants to do it after it opens, I think that is something for them to consider. Right, so once it opens, uh, you can add it into your portfolio. Th thank you so much, Padmanabhan, for sending us your question. Let's move on to our next viewer. Uh, Mr. Rajesh is on the phone line with us. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, yes, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Hello. Okay, you want Amalwa? to invest 10 yeah. lakhs for your... Yeah, yeah, you're completely audible. Yeah. 10 lakhs for child's education for next seven years. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, do you have any existing uh, mutual funds in your portfolio or do you have an existing uh, uh, financial portfolio that you can share with us? Uh, no, I already have some planning, already doing some noting, but I'm planning to get this amount by some, uh, in, like, you know, in one or two months with 10 lakhs. So I want to only use this for my child. Uh, sure. I know he is going but to you be... do have existing funds in your portfolio? You do have mutual funds in your portfolio, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the retirement purpose, I have some plan, like ELS. One, like, can one. I know the <laughs> can I know the fund's name? Because what will happen is we will give you a strategy, but we don't want a case where we repeat the same kind of funds. You know, it doesn't no, make sense it. repeating yeah. the same kind of investments for this for for different goals. So if you remember your retirement uh, uh, allocation funds, you can just give us the name, and you know, Anil can just note it down quickly. Rajesh. Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you come again? I have Quant ELSS one. Quant ELSS one. ELSS one. Yes, okay. Quant. And? Quant. And Nippon Growth. Nippon? Nippon uh, Growth. Nippon Growth. Nippon Multi Cap. Nippon Multi Cap. Okay. And Nippon Small Cap. You have Nippon Small Cap. Okay. Uh, ICC Multi Cap. ICICI Multi Cap. ICC okay. value discovery, but ICC large and mid cap. Value discovery and large and mid cap. Mid cap, yeah. Okay, so this is for your retirement portfolio. All yeah. right, now yeah. looking at this, we will uh, give you a plan for your child's education, seven years of the time horizon. Thank you so much for giving us these details. And uh, Anil, so he's got um, eight funds already. Uh, those are for his retirement. We will come on this later on, but then first let's plan the investment of 10 lakh rupees for seven years. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I think, you know, uh, yeah, there are a couple of points to keep in mind while you're planning for, planning for your child's, you know, education or, you know, for your requirement that you may have. So uh, 
basically you're saying that you have a time frame of seven years uh, and and so that so from that perspective uh, you know one doesn't have uh, you know such a lot of time as well so you need to you know plan for it uh, well and and as one comes closer to your requirement uh, you'll have to see how you can get out of equity and you know make it closer to a debt uh, allocation now you're keeping in mind the funds that uh, you know, you have also suggested that you have, okay, uh, so I would suggest that, you know, you can look at something like a Nippon India large cap. Okay, yes, you do have your growth and you also have your multi and small cap. I think so the large cap will be uh, complementary and for a requirement uh, which you will need like this, which is important and, you know, you'll want to be slightly conservative, which is where we have chosen, you know, a large cap fund. Uh, you can also do uh, some bit of it in a hybrid, okay, because uh, like I said, the tenure is not too long. So the ICSF through uh, equity and debt fund uh, can be an option to look at. And uh, the other one, you know, to just give you a little bit of a higher risk level, maybe you can look at, a, you know, a Kotak equity opportunities fund. And, and that is something that uh, you can have. So uh, I was to also suggest I say say through multi cap, but you already have it. Okay, so you know we we probably can you know let it pass, and you already have a good number of funds. So I think uh, spreading it out between the three, you know, Nippon large cap, quarter uh, uh, equity opportunities, as well as I say say through equity and debt. I think uh, into these three funds. Like I said, as you come closer to maybe the fifth year. Then the first one you'll have to sort of reduce in terms of exposure to equity is uh, quote equity opportunities, and maybe within one year from the time frame, you know you can start moving both your large cap as well as your equity and debt, uh, two debt options, uh, so that you know in case there's a down at the time of your requirement, you know uh, you're not at a disadvantage. So that is maybe a, a good way to plan for your requirement. So, uh, Rajesh, STP route to be adopted and uh, the kind of funds we recommended, Nippon uh, India Large Cap, Kotak Equity Opportunities, ICICI Pro Equity and Debt and ICICI Pro Multi Cap. And uh, is there anything else you want to ask, uh, Anil? Sorry, like, uh, like I have one query, like when I want to switch to, I can make it uh, lump sum, I need to take from that uh, after five years or I need to take the SWP mode, which is the preferred mode to get that amount back. Like after five years, so I want to get uh, like take the bonus. So when I need to take the SWP mode, or I need to take a lump sum mode, like get that amount. That depends on your requirement, right? After seven years, you'll be having this expense on you. Okay, okay. So, so okay. I, I mean, so SWP, you will be getting money uh, as per the mandate given by you. But then, if you need the money in chunk, you can just withdraw it accordingly, right? Anil, is there anything yeah. else you want to add, Anil? So I think while investing right now, I'm suggesting he invest through an STP. But uh, normally a need like a child education typically, you know, is a lump sum need that you may have. So if, for example, it's over multiple years, then you can also stagger it. Okay? So uh, to the extent that you need, uh, let's say one year from now, one and a half year from now, you can put in a debt fund. Okay. And uh, you can continue, say, with the equity and debt if it's a second year or third year. Right. So, so those are things that you can do. But it will be completely as per what a requirement is, right? And and so if, for example, it's just uh, monthly fees, then you can do a systematic withdrawal. But it's very unlikely that, you know, if you need a larger lump sum for higher education, uh, you probably need a bigger lump sum. And if at all, maybe it may be in come on a yearly basis, right? So you can plan accordingly based on your need. And But I'm again emphasizing that as you come closer to your need, right, you need to actually uh, push it into debt so that you can withdraw it and not have any market impact at the time of your requirement. All the best, uh, uh, Rajesh. We move on and let's take Pankaj Srivedi's question. He's from Vadodra. Pankaj, hi, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Swati, and good evening, Mr. Anil. Uh, I would like to uh, invest 25 lakhs. So, any sure. suggestion? Uh, should I invest uh, uh, this uh, 25 lakhs into FT? At the rate of 7.25 percent, in that case, I will get at least monthly uh, uh, payout of 15,000 rupees. That is a pre-tax return. Or second option is, uh, should I invest lump sum, wherein I need at least one lakh rupees uh, 
monthly to SWP investigate you please suggest uh, some funds where, where, can, where can I invest. All right, so what's actually your financial goal for this particular investment? Actually, I don't have any goal. I'm getting lump sum amount. So I just want to invest. Okay. I have been doing uh, SIP uh, to various funds. So that is our current investment, yeah. And your average holding period will be what, 18 months, one and a half year or two years? 18 to 25 months. 18, 18 to 25, 25 months will be, sure. Okay, all right. And after that, uh, you need an uh, SWP of 1 lakh per month. Okay, let's get this question answered quickly. Anil, over to you now. So, um, Anil, what do you recommend? 18 to 25 months is holding period. Should he be going for a fixed deposit or uh, uh, any other balanced approach via debt mutual funds that's recommendable? Because 1 lakh per month will be his requirement through SWP then. Yeah, so to that extent, because uh, of the requirement which is there, he can build it up to a certain extent. And what I would think is, you know, if you're doing only debt, uh, you know, you may not get a good return and you also lose out on the taxes side. Okay, so uh, my suggestion would be uh, to the extent of the income that you need, right, you put that into your debt fund, right? And so let's say, for example, uh, you need, a, you know, uh, a lakh per month. Of course, a lakh per month is almost like, uh, you know, uh, 12 lakhs per year, right? So you will, you will be actually eroding your capital. Okay, so, uh, so, so you need to rethink on is that the amount that I need? Uh, and, and, you know, uh, so that is something, uh, if you know within two weeks, uh, you know, you are actually uh, more or less depleting your capital and you can probably run a little further based on your returns. If you want one lakh a month and you're, uh, and that is your requirement, then it'll be, it would need to be purely debt. And it doesn't make a difference whether you do FDs or you do, you know, the mutual funds. But if you're able to have a smaller monthly income, right, that you need, then I would keep some part of it, let's say, in a dynamic asset allocation fund, right? So ideally, uh, you know, keep about 30% uh, into a dynamic asset allocation fund and 70% into systematic withdrawal, uh, even if you erode capital a little more. So what comes out to you from the dynamic asset allocation fund, hopefully will deliver you that little extra return, which you can, you know, uh, elongate your requirement for a longer period. All right, that's the solution for you. And on that note, it's time we are doing your life financial planning. And for that, today I have with me Anil Rego. Anil, uh, let's take uh, uh, Anmol's question via email. And he says that he's been investing in SIPs so of uh, ICICI Prudential Mutual Funds for last three years, and he received good returns. He wants to know if he can switch his profits to any other fund or of any other AMC, maybe Nippon Mahindra or HDFC, in mid and small cap. So a lot of information missing in terms of what kind of funds he has. He's just given us the details of the AMCs, which are top performing AMCs right now as well. But then, you know, to give him the advice on the basis of shifting his profits, we would really need more details. So Anmol, we don't have all the details, but from since whatever you've given us, um, Anil, what is your recommendation? Yeah, first of all, I think the concept of, okay, uh, should I, you know, book profits and uh, reinvest in some other scheme, right? So, so the point to keep in mind uh, while you book profits and if you move into another equity fund, you're not necessarily managing risk at all, right? It, it continues to be equity. And if you end up going to maybe from uh, a large cap to a mid cap, then you're actually increasing your risk, right? So, uh, so what I would think is, uh, you know, rather than switching funds, Right. I would uh, suggest that he uh, relooks to the SIPs and has them over multiple fund houses. I think the only thing that uh, I can comment based on the limited information is, you know, it's not good to have all money only into one fund house because what if the scheme turned out to form? Right. And it's normal to see, uh, you know, mutual fund schemes and, and uh, AMCs, you know, not, are not able to maintain, you know, performance right through a long period of time. So it's, which is why it's good to diversify. Uh, keeping that in mind, I would still say, unless he wants to book profits, then if you're booking profits, then you need to move it to debt, right? And you may, you may start an STP back again, but uh, then only you're you doing anything worthwhile. If a fund is underperforming, then you can switch, right? So uh, so that's the second principle, if it's underperforming switch. But otherwise, I would just say, if the funds are doing okay, uh, you know, then just relook at your SIPs, stop some of your SIPs, 
and diversify it across multiple fund houses. So you get, you know, a slightly more diversified return. All right. Also requesting Anmol to send across his question with uh, more details in terms of uh, what funds you have in your portfolio. And with that, it's a wrap on the show today. Thank you so much, uh, Anil, for being on the show and helping our viewers answering their queries. And uh, time to say goodbye, but I'm going to leave you with our WhatsApp number and email ID where you can send across your questions to us. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.